How are interest rates and more recently the geo geopolitical um, events uh, around the globe affecting uh, transactions in your in your work generally? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say interest rates, uh, particularly the increase over the last 18 months has, has been a, a very large impact across uh, almost every business that we take a look at, particularly in our world, um, where a lot of the, the purchases of, of opportunities are, are using debt. Um, it's, it's, it's a big, big issue. Um, and I think particularly for 2021 acquisitions that probably today, you know, you would say the multiples um, were not necessarily fair value. You know, those businesses are particularly over levered. Um, and in the healthcare sector, and in healthcare services, at the same time, interest rates have gone up. We've also seen increases in labor inflation, supply chain disruption, all the things that we've been hearing about. And you need to really figure out what the sustainability of, of those businesses will be in this new environment. Um, it, it also requires um, setting businesses up from a new acquisition perspective with, with much more conservative uh, levels of leverage. Um, so how we're combating it is, you know, we're working with our portfolio companies uh, we're figuring out ways to optimize the business. We're using tech, AI, machine learning, different ways to, to find new opportunities, to, to reduce costs. Um, it, it's become very prevalent in, in everything that we're doing. I'll just, I'll just add to that that um, I see it forcing discipline in investment underwriting, especially in the earlier stages where um, in a close to zero interest rate environment, some decisions could seem rational that no longer seem rational with normal rates of interest. I would also add that the labor costs have gone up with inflation and everything else, and that in healthcare is putting tremendous pressure on hospitals um, in particular, given the stresses that uh, nurses and other staff went through during COVID, um, then coming out of that and facing inflation at a personal level, driving a lot of people out of the healthcare workforce. That's increasing the demand for information technology and anything that can create efficiency and relieve some of the stresses, the day-to-day -day stresses of non-value-add work that nurses are asked to do in terms of documentation or referrals or other things that information technology can, can solve for. Yeah, I would just add, um, you know, I think strategics, companies and investors think about cost of capital and return on capital. And so when cash is at 5%, the hurdle, the bar is just higher, right? So if you're thinking about the asset classes of venture and growth into private equity and public, you've just had massive risk off almost immediately. So in the venture world, you have board members saying, well, we want you to grow at all costs. And then six months later, we want you to be profitable. And so it, the dramatic shift happens so dramatically um, that companies, boards didn't really have time to digest it. But then you're looking at the market and saying, well, you know, I'm going to go raise debt, and it was at 8%, and now it's at 14 And so that calculus, I think people are starting to internalize that. I think that's why the last 12 to 18 months, there was a lot of just sitting and waiting. We heard of a lot of private equity funds that raised a fund in 2022 or calling me and saying, we haven't done a deal in 12 to 18 months. That's not sustainable, right? And so I think that's where the next six, six to 12 months, rates are where they are, and I think they may stay there for a bit and maybe come down. Um, but people are starting to naturally return to, okay, if this is the current normal, what, how do we deploy capital effectively? Yeah, completely echo that. I think the next 12 months is going to look great for m and activity. To that point, the dollars have to get out the door, right? Investors have to invest. It's CO2 and oxygen, right? Uh, but to the phrase that was used previously, disciplined investing means cheaper investing, right? Multiples are lower, cost of capital is higher. So access to that funding from before, and you know, pre-21 or pre-pandemic multiples are, are gone. And we're coming up on the end of two years of a barbell market. So you've seen value compress on both ends. And that barbell market is really large companies trading at a lower price, a lot of take privates happening now, and then really small companies trading. Healthy middle market companies that are founder led or initial private equity fund led at the moment, they have the time to wait it out to hope that the multiples are gonna bop back up at least that 15% that we've seen shed in the past year or two. But all of that's led for volumes to be quite down. So disciplined investing means lower multiples and it taking longer to get a deal done.